Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa a'udzu billahi min syarri anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina wa man yudhillillahu fala mudhillalah wa man yudhlil fala hadiyalah. Wa asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lah. Wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, verily all praises for Allah. We praise Him and seek His aid and ask for His forgiveness and seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguides, none can guide. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, who has no partners. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his servant and messenger. May the blessings and peace of Allah be upon all of you. Have you ever wondered whether keeping a beard is just a sunnah, a practice of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu or a wajib, an obligation for Muslim men? You might have heard people say growing a beard is just a sunnah and that shaving it is only slightly disliked. Some might even argue that in order to fit into society, it's better to shave. But let us pause for a moment. What does the Quran, Sunnah and our respected scholars say about this? Today, I want to dive deeper into this topic and explore why many Muslims consider that keeping the beard is obligatory. As this topic involves many references, we will have to break them down into a few episodes in order to fully cover it. As a surprise in the last episode, I will also share with you something personal. How my journey in keeping the beard led me to having the need to change my madhab, school of thought, from Shafi to Hanbali in Singapore. So stay tuned until the very end. Is following a madhab obligatory? I encourage you to explore this yourself. Personally, I believe that madhabs are essential, especially for new reverts who are just beginning their journey into Islam. They serve as guides to help us live in accordance with the teachings of Prophet Muhammad without causing division. If we were to ask our beloved Prophet Muhammad about his madhab, I imagine he would simply remind us to take him as the best example and to follow the way of life that aligns with the Quran. As Muslims, we have the responsibility of guiding and supporting each other in the understanding of the true essence of Islam so that we can live by its teachings and appreciate its virtues. Let's also remember our duty to invite non-Muslims to this beautiful, unadulterated truth of Islam. Upholding and promoting this blessed guidance is a privilege and duty that every one of us should cherish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 104, وَتَقُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةَوِي وَدَعُونَ إِلَّا الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ أَعْنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُثْلِهُونَ let there arise from you, Muslims, a nation that invites to good and join what is right, for be it wrong, for those are the successful. This is an obligation on every Muslim according to his ability. In Surah Al Maidah, chapter 5, verse 2, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, Wa ta'awanu alal birri, wa taqawa wa la ta'awanu alal idhmi, wa al udawani wa taqawa inna laha sadidul ikob. Help one another in righteousness and piety, and do not help one another in sinning and transgression, and be mindful of Allah. Surely, Allah is severe in punishment. This is the only way to attain Allah's acceptance and to achieve happiness and success. In Surah Al-As, chapter 103, verse 1-3, by time, indeed, mankind is in loss, except for those who believe, do good deeds, mutually enjoin the truth, and advise each other to patience. And this is the way to establish true and honest compassion among Muslims, a compassion that is emanating from a strong, unifying cause. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 103, and hold firmly together to the rope of Allah and do not be divided. Inviting each other to the truth means offering real practical Islamic solutions to the challenges we face today. Let's be honest, only Allah's guidance has the power to heal us from our struggles, whether they be personal battles or issues affecting our entire community. 
When we turn to His infinite wisdom, we find the most complete and fulfilling answers to life's problem, showing us that His way is the best way forward for all of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah chapter 5 verse 49, وَأَنِّهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ وَلَا تَتَبِي أَهْوَاءَهُمْ Judge between them according to what Allah has revealed and do not follow their errant views. So now, let's look at the beard and why it is an obligation for Muslim men to keep it. Firstly, what is the definition of a beard according to Islam? The Arabic word for beard is lihyatun and it is defined as the hair that grows on the cheeks and the jaws. It includes the hair that grows on the temples, underneath the lower lip, the hair of the chin, and the hair that grows on the lower side of the jaws. This understanding emphasizes the beard encompasses more than just the chin hair. It is a defining part of man's appearance according to Islamic teachings. In the next video, I'll be sharing with you 9 points as to why keeping the beard is considered obligatory for Muslim men. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my social channels Shah Harold S H A H E R A L D on YouTube, Ferdaus Chia F E R D A U S C H I A on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Share this video so that others can benefit from this knowledge, maybe grow a beard, and that you can earn the rewards from Allah for spreading it. We approach Rabiul Awal, the blessed month commemorating the birth of our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and reflecting on his early life as an orphan. What better way to honor his legacy than to help those in need? May Allah Azza wa Jal accept all our efforts, multiply our rewards, and ease the suffering of every orphan child. May He grant us the strength to continue on this noble work following the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, not only in this month of Rabiul Awal, but throughout our lives. May His mercy and guidance always be with us. But before I let you go, on the 2nd of November 2024, I'll be traveling to Palestine. So if you have any dua that you would like to send our dear brothers and sisters there, write them down in the comment section here in this video or send a DM to me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.